Welcome to this brief screencast on the concept of Java generics or generics in Java. Um, let's say we have the problem of needing to create a class called box that can hold instances of other classes. So it's got, it holds an item. So it has two methods, set, which sets the item in the box, and get, which returns the item in the box. Now the type of the item can be different types. So maybe I want to put uh, strings or integers or something in my box. So what are some possible solutions? Well, the simplest and probably the most straightforward way is you create a class where you actually declare the type of each item. Unfortunately, that means I got to write one class for every type of item that I want to store and how many objects or how many classes are there out there? millions and arbitrarily large. If someone creates a new class and I want to store it in my box, I got to create a new class. So this just doesn't work because I have to create a class for every class I want to store. And that just doesn't work and it's just too impossible to do. Um, so unfortunately it's a simple solution but it just doesn't work. The next solution is we could understand that in Java the object class is the parent class of everything. So every class in Java inherits from object. So we could use object to store the item. So inside of our box we have our ob item, which is a type object. Our set method takes an item, or excuse me, takes an object, stores it in it. So if you passed in a string, that's fine. If you passed in an integer, that's fine. Our return value for our get must be an object. So the question is, is this a great solution? Well, the answer is this is the way it worked in earlier versions of Java, is this is how you'd solve this problem. One of the issues with it is, how do you know the type of the item? Because it is an object, but if you put in an integer or a, a car or a student or something into he, the box, you probably want to get that student or car back out. So you have to know what you put in to come or you to say is it an instance of the other thing that you have to do is you got to cast the result of get because the get method returns an object in order to turn it back into its original type you have to cast it and if you cast incorrectly you're going to get a runtime exception and that's dangerous so how does how did we solve this or how does java solve this we now have the concept of using generic types so we have, notice we have our class box. We have this bracket, a capital letter and a closed bracket, or less than or greater than. And that's how we indicate that it's a generic. So we're saying that the box is gonna hold a type. And where that T is, you can have any capital letter, you can have capital letters or numbers. Um, often in the Java doc documentation, the Java API, you'll see T for type. The textbook uses E often. I use E in a lot of my slides. Um, it's completely, you could use any letter, or capital letter you want. And notice that in the class, we're using the T, the capital T in this case, to represent the actual class of, so item is of type T. We don't know what T is yet, but when we instantiate a box, we have to declare what type T is. So now the return type of get is specific. It's not an object. It is a T. And so you also can only set the object or the item using class T or any subclass of class T. So how do we create these boxes now? Well, we need to supply the type for T. So if we want to create a box of strings, we say box supply the string, the type, S equals new, and then we supply again, supplying it again in the sec on the right hand side is very nice to do. It's not mandatory because you know the type based upon the declaration of the variable S is a box of strings. If we want a box of integers, we say box integer, new variable name, and we create a new box. And now this says we have now set the type that S can take store. It's a string. So I can say set s set foo, and that's legal because foo's a string, and I don't need to cast the return of get to a string because get 
s return value or the type of the return of get for s is a string, whereas the return type of i.get is an integer. I can't say s set 211 because 211 is an integer and there's that's not the right value for the s sets method. If I said i set 211, that is legal because 211 is an integer and I can set i's the box i's item to be 211. I can't set s's item to an integer. I had to have to somehow create the string 211. So this is a quick overview of generics where we can actually now create classes that deal with any type by providing the generic type was less than the type and that's just a capital letter and uh, greater than so that when we instantiate it we can instantiate these very these objects these instances that can know how to handle a specific type thank you very much